Jeremiah 18, verse 1 through 6. The word of the Lord come to Jeremiah and tells him to go down to the potter's house. And watch the potter raw the work upon the wheel. And he goes down to the potter's house and watch him make a vessel up on the wheel out of clay. And the vessel is marred so that he makes it into another vessel that seemeth good. Goes on and says, Israel, you are the clay and the Lord is the potter. So I want to speak on the thought of the potter and the clay. Amen. Romans 9 talks about vessels of wrath and vessels that are chosen by God. The way the predestination works is because God foreknew he predestinated. He looked down through time and he predestinated the church and it's up to you to get saved and 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 21 says that if any man be a vessel that is purged he shall be prepared for every good work. Amen. So when the Bible speaks about the Lord hardening Pharaoh's heart 18 times, it says the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. But just as many times as it says that God hardened Pharaoh's heart, it says that Pharaoh hardened his own heart. So, in the sense that the way that Pharaoh's heart was hardened is like we say, the sun melts the wax and hardens the clay. It's not the sun's fault. It's the material's fault. Amen. So, how you conform to the Lord making you is up to you. Now, when he went down, he got the clay he took it and he got the sticks and the grass and whatever was in it and he would take and put water on it and he would throw it smack down into the wheel. It says it's uh, up on the wheels. What it was, there was a wheel below and he used his foot to spin the wheel. And it run with an axle up to the top of the wheel. And he used his feet to spin the wheel. Similar to the old time sewing machine, but the wheel was round and he spun it around. And he would add water to it to make it the way that he wanted it. Ephesians 5 and 26 speaks about the washing of the water by the word. Titus speaks about the washing of the regeneration of the word. John 7 and 37 says, He that believeth upon me, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So in order for the Lord to make us, we got to have that spirit coming into our lives so that he can form us. Genesis 1, 26 says that God made man in his own image, in his own likeness. But man lost that image. Genesis 5, 1 through 3 says that Seth was made in the image of Adam. Psalm 51 and verse 5 says, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Romans 5 and 12 says, By one man's sin entered into the world, sin passed upon all men. Job 14 says, Man is born to a woman, and in a few days is full of trouble. He spun that wheel, those wheels, to make that vessel. And if it didn't turn out the way he wanted it, he would smash it. And he would pick it up and he would slam it into the middle of the wheel. And he would begin to spin that wheel so that he could make it. He made it into the vessel that he wanted. 
Now, some people have made themselves into the vessels of wrath because that's what they want to be. The Bible said the Lord would send them uh, the illusion that they should believe a lie and be damned. But we don't have to be that way. The Bible said if you should know the truth, the truth shall set you free. So when he spun that, he made it into a dish or a plate or a bowl, drinking vessel, or some kind of vessel. He would spin it. And the clay and the wheels are the same today. The only thing difference is they use electric. They got electric motors on them. But far as making the vessels out of clay and using the same thing, using his hands to form it, form it the way that he wanted it. And uh, it's still the same. The gospel never changes. Style change. People change. Things change. But the gospel is always the same. John 3, except a man be born again, 2,000 years later, we got to be born again the same way. Amen. The baptism of the Holy Ghost, baptism, Matthew 28, 19, name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, still the same way. Style change. I can remember, I've been preaching almost 50 years, and I can remember when I first got saved, I had them real wide neckties. They were short, they looked like Humphrey Bogart, Al Capone neckties, you know. Well, my wife threw all them away. I had one of them leisure suits. It was burgundy. I had a pair of bell-bottom pants that was plaid that you sat on the couch and matched the couch. <laughs> but things have changed. And the stars have changed. But this gospel and the potter and the clay is still the same way. And the thing about it is, the main important thing about that vessel that he made was the mouth. The mouth. The Bible says that the power of life and death lie in the tongue. Yeah. The Bible says in Romans 10 verse 9, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confess and made unto salvation, and with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. Matthew 15 and Mark 7 says, Those things that proceedeth out of the mouth, they are the things that defile you. So the mouth of the vessel was the main thing because we confess him by faith. We praise him. We honor him through our mouth. And that was the main part of this. And he could form it any way that he wanted it. Now, I don't want to be like nobody else. I don't want to preach like Claude Ely or Johnny Carter or Harley Hensley. I thought they was great. I want to be me. I don't want to be somebody else. And you are to be you, not to be somebody else. So this vessel, when it was made, it was made into something good. Or it could be made into a useless vessel to be used for something bad. And the thing about it is the Lord wants us to use our mouth to speak good things. Amen. Let the mouth praise him and honor him and confess him. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Euphism. E-U-P-H-I-M-E-S-H. Euphism means that when you talk, you don't use Rude language. Dysphism. D-I-S means corrupt. Cacophism. C-A-C-O means really, really bad. There was about 40 
There is a half a million words in an unabridged dictionary. And there was about 40 cuss words and there are 12 real bad words. So there's no use for a Christian man to use bad language or a Christian woman to use bad language. Amen. Let all manner of evil speak and be put away from you. It's called euphism. E-U-P-H-I-M-E-S-H. And this phism is when you use crude language. We use euphism when somebody dies, we say they passed away. We say we're going to a burying. We say they're going to a layout. Yeah. This vision we say, I puked or my guts hurt. Well, euphism says I vomited or my intestines hurt. Yeah. Christian people that are saved are to use euphism. And you're known by your words. And I'm around people that use bad language that claim to go to church. It's not good. Can I get somebody to say amen? Amen. 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 But the mouth, we confess him with the mouth. And God wants you to be a vessel that he can use. Now all of us want to be better. And Hebrews is the book of better. Better is mentioned 13 times. In the book of Hebrews, it's known as the book of better. The Bible said the woman with the issue of blood, she spent everything that she had. She was nothing the better. But Hebrews said that this provides better things than Abel. That God has provided better things for us. It's better than the dispensation of angels. It's better than... Uh, better sacrifices, a better testament, a better covenant, a better hope, a better resurrection, better than Moses, better than Aaron, better than the priesthood. We're going to a better country. And that's why I got saved when I was 23 years of age. I wanted to better myself. Amen. People want a better home, they want a better car, they want better clothes. If you want a better life, you are to come to Jesus and not get saved because he will make you a better person. The Bible says a good name is better than riches, so I want to have a good name. If I come down here and preach and I want to uh, have a good name and I want to have a good report, and all of us want something new. And when he took this vessel, if it was marred, he mashed it up, he put some more water on it, and he slammed it in the middle of the wheel, and he spun the wheel, and he would make that vessel, try to make it into a good vessel, a vessel of honor. And so when you get saved, the Lord gives you New things. Isaiah says, I will create new things. The Bible said in Acts 17, they spent their time in nothing but to hear or tell some new thing. So John chapter 3 said, except a man be born of the new birth, he can't go to heaven. Do you know that 72% of the American people believe that there's other ways to go to heaven besides Jesus Christ? 72% yeah. of the people. Acts 4 and 12 said, There's none other name under heaven given among men. Amen. John 3 and 16, there's 25 words in John 3 and 16, and the middle word is son. The 13th word is son. 12 words before and 12 words after but son is in the middle of John 3 and 16. Jesus is in the middle, and we need to put Jesus in the middle of everything. The Bible said in the midst of the church, I will praise thy name. Jesus is in the midst of the seven candlesticks. 
Jesus was crucified between the midst of thieves. The Bible said he sat in the midst of doctors and lawyers. When Jesus rose from the dead, he appeared in the midst of them. When they was out on the boat in the storm, they had rolled from evening to three o'clock in the morning. They rolled for nine long hours, and it was eight miles across the Sea of Galilee, and they rolled nine hours, and they only rolled four miles. But the Bible says Jesus saw them, and he came, and he sat down in the midst of the boat. You need to get Jesus in the middle of your mess and he can straighten your mess out. Oh, I feel like preaching tonight. Let me preach to you about the vessel and the potter. You see, we all want new things. And the Bible said the new birth and said he would give us a new and living way. And the Bible said that he's a, there is a, a, a new heart and he would give us a new spirit, and he would make you a new creation, and he would make you a new man or a new woman, and you would speak with new tongues, and when you get to heaven, he's going to give you a brand new home, and we're going to a new city called New Jerusalem, and we're going to a new heaven, and we're going to a new earth. I'm here to tell you, God can make you a better person, and he can give you a lot of new things. You know, when I married my wife, I think she only had three or four dresses. Now she's got five closets full of dresses. Can you believe that? Five closets full of dresses. They tell me that my wife looks like she come out of Elder Beerman and I look like I run out of money at Goodwill. But I'll tell you something, I'm glad that the Lord has saved us and made something out of us, don't you? He'll make you a better person. He'll make you and give you all kinds of new things. You see, God says, I want to make you a beautiful vessel. And he can make something out of you. All you young people sitting out here tonight, I want you to come to this altar tonight when I make an altar call. I don't want you to sit back there. I want you to come up to this altar and pray. And you can make something out of yourself. I read a story one time about two frogs fell in a can of cream. And they began to kick and scream. And one said, I've had enough of this crazy stuff. I'm a giving in. I can't win. And he went down, and on the bottom, there he drowned. And the other frog wiped the cream from his eyes, said, I ain't about to die. I ain't a giving in. I'm a going to win. I'm a going to fight this crazy stuff. He began to kick and kick, and he noticed the more he kicked, this stuff began to get thick, and he kicked and kicked, and another word, he didn't mutter until he stepped out on top of the butter. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you something, folks. The Lord can make something out of you. Can he do it? A little cork fell into the trail of a big bad well, and the waves fell in rows, and up popped the little brown cork before the whale's nose. And he said, Mr. Whale, don't get me wrong. I know you're big and strong. You spit and sputter and frown. But me, you cannot keep down. For I made a stuff that is good enough to keep me up. And this is my story. When you're long gone, I'll still be around. Oh, let me tell you something, folks. I'm glad that the Lord can make something out of us. Come and sing for us, folks. Singers, come on up here. We're going to make an altar call. Come on, sister. Brothers, come on up here. The singers come and sing for us. Come on up here. That one sang a while ago. Come on up here. Come, everybody, that song. We want to make an altar call. Look, I want you to come to the altar. I want everybody to stand with us, please. Please stand. Amen. But the Lord has made something out of all of us. He loves us. Amen.